In your travels, you might come across numbers with fractional powers. An example would be 4 to the power of a half. And before we see what that means, let's just do a little experiment. What would be 4 to the power of a half times by 4 to the power of a half? As you may know, when you multiply two numbers with the same base, you can simply add the powers. So multiplying these two numbers, we can add a half plus a half, which equals 1. So without even knowing what 4 to the power of a half means, we know that if we multiplied it by itself, we would get 4 to the power of 1. And anything to the power of 1 is just itself, 4. But hang on a second, what about the square root of 4 times by the square root of 4? I thought that just gets back to itself. You're right. The square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 4, which is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Hang on a second. My mind just got blown. Are you trying to tell me that 4 to the power of a half is the square root of 4? Yes. So, 4 to the power of a half, or anything to the power of a half, is the square root of that number. Using the same trick, we can see that something like 27 to the power of a third is going to be the cube root of 27. Because if we multiplied that by itself three times, you would get a third plus a third plus a third, which is 1. 3 thirds, which is 1. And 27 to the power of 1 is just 27. And what's the thing where you multiply it by itself three times gets back to the number? The cube root. To cut a long story short, whatever the number is in the fraction at the bottom, that's your root. So the bottom line is your root. Let's quickly check that out. What do you reckon 25 to the power of a half is then? 25 to the power of a half. The bottom line is 2, so it's going to be square root. The square root of 25 equals 5. So 25 to the power of a half equals 5. How about 49? To the power of a half. The bottom line is 2, so it's square root, and the square root of 49 is 7. Now a more tricky one, 64 to the power of a third. Now the bottom line is 3, so it's not square root, so it's not 8, it's cube root. So the power of a third, as we saw, means the cube root of the number. And we saw why as well. And the cube root of 64 is actually 4. It's good to know that. Here's a question I saw recently in an exam paper. Express the square root of 125 as a single power of 5. So 5 to the power of something. Well, you might know, and it'd be good to know, that 125 is 5 cubed. So 5 cubed is 125. Well, we saw that a square root changes into a half. In other words, if you half the power, because it used to be just 4, which is 4 to the power of 1, but then it's become square root 4, or 4 to the power of a half. So if you half the power, that has the effect of square rooting it. How elegant is that? If you half the power, what you end up doing is square rooting it. So to square root 5 cubed, we just half the power. So it's 5 to the 3 upon 2, or 5 to the 1.5, is the same thing as the square root of 125. Okay, now I'm going to merge in something I've done in a different video, which is negative powers. 
so we can combine what we've learned to solve some of the hardest problems you'll get with powers. How about something like 36 to the power of minus a half. 36 to the power of minus a half. Now, as we saw in a different video, that minus does not make the answer minus. It has the effect of making it 1 over, or basically the reciprocal. That minus has the effect of do, making it the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 36 is 1 over 36. The reciprocal of 2 over 3 is 3 over 2. That's what the minus does. What about the half? Well, as we've just seen, the half makes it square root. So we have 1 over the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. So it's 1 over 6 is the answer, 1 6. Let's try the hardest possible one. The hardest possible one is going to involve both a root and a power. What do I mean by that? Well, something like 4 over 9 to the power of 3 over 2. The power of 3 over 2, or 3 halves. Now you might want to write this down, but the bottom line, as we've seen, is always the root. The top line is, as usual, the power. 2 root. What does that mean? Well, that's going to be square root. Just like a half was a square root, but it just kept a power of 1, that bottom line of 2 always means a square root. So we're going to do the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. I can tell you're wondering, what about that power of 3? Let's do that next. It's always good to do the root first. It makes it easier. So we now have 2 thirds cubed. 2 cubed is 8. And 3 cubed is 27. So 4 over 9 to the power of 3 over 2 is 8 over 27. I've decided to do one final crazy hard one. What we're going to do is... 64 over 125 to the power of, oh my goodness, minus 2 over 3. If you get this, you deserve a gold medal. Well done. First, let's deal with that minus. What does that minus do in the power? It doesn't make it negative, remember, it simply makes it the reciprocal. So it's now going to be 125 over 64. It flips it over. But we still have the 2 thirds. What does the 2 and the 3 represent? Don't forget. Bottom line root, top line power. And let's do the root first. The 3 root. In other words, the cube root. The bottom line is a root, and it says a 3, so we cube root it. What's the cube root of 125? As we saw before, it's 5. What's the cube root of 64? As we saw before, it's 4. So we've done the root, so we don't need to write that over 3 anymore. We've just got the power left, the power of 2. To the power of 2. Anyway... Um, 5 squared is, let's do the final answer over here, 5 squared is 25 and 4 squared is 16. So all of that hard work of 64 over 125 to the power of minus 2 thirds, we get the final answer of 25 over 16. The minus flipped it, the 3 on the bottom line cube rooted it, and the 2 on the top line of the fraction powered it by 2, squared it. And that's how you do numbers with fractional powers.